it's reasonably good. We're going to grow, uh, if you want a number, of around 2.4% this year is what we think. That's, by historical standards, not especially strong. But in the Canadian context right now, it will be one of the strongest economic performances among all the provinces, if not right at the top of the heap. And part of the reason for that is BC's economy is, is very diverse, and that's creating some resiliency. Uh, we, do, we do depend on China, and we have shipped more exports to China over the past decade. But, uh, you know, because we get growth from the U.S., increased exports to the U.S. and other parts of the world, the slowdown in China is not pulling us down. And uh, the exchange rate is providing a huge lift, the, the devaluation in the Canadian dollar, providing a huge lift for exporters uh, and areas uh, like tourism, as well as um, other sectors, uh, non-resource manufacturing in particular. The big thing on the dollar is the boost of the export sector. Um, so commodity prices around the globe are down. That is clearly weighing on BC's economy. But as I said a moment ago, non-resource exports are getting a lift. In effect, they're on sale now 30% in the U.S. marketplace. It's also providing a lift to film and television. And as an economist, we consider something like film and television an export because it's a flow of dollars external from an external source into the province. So that's like an export. Uh, same with tourism. The, uh, you, you touched upon retail. Uh, if you go back a few years ago, there was a huge number of people crossing the border to buy gas and other things, and it was up around five, six hundred thousand people going each month to, to make those kind of purchases. So we took a look at that and actually concluded that it was having a material effect on the total volume of retail sales in the province, that leakage. Okay, fast forward three years with the dollar now 30% uh, lower than it was at that time and not surprisingly people are responding to that and they're not going over in the same numbers that they once were. They are still going, there's still around 450,000 people going each month but uh, that's down almost 200,000 from, from where it was. So as a result we think that uh, retailers that are kind of clustered along the border, border will do better and we think it's a factor also in our strong retail sales growth that we're experiencing here in the province. There's many other factors, but that border thing is part of the piece, uh, piece of the puzzle. We, uh, we've got s some pickup in employment, that's a factor, and then you've got wealthy immigrants coming into the province, spending money, particularly at the higher end in luxury cars and luxury stores. I think that's part of, part of the puzzle as well. So all, all these things are, are lining up to create a fairly robust uh, retail environment here in the province. BC is the most China-oriented economy uh, in Canada, not surprisingly, our gateway lo location, and we're the closest uh, geographic proximity to China of, of any other provinces. So the slowdown in China, uh, it's, it's gone from in excess of 10% growth for the better part of 30 years, down to official numbers saying 6.5%, 7%, with a many pundits who watch China quite closely saying, you know what, it's probably weaker than that. And they look to things like growth in electricity consumption, uh, the volume of imports, to try and get a sense of whether the official Chinese GDP data numbers are in fact accurate, or perhaps they're being boosted and inflated a little bit. And there is a fair bit of evidence out there that they might be a, a little generous in their interpretation interpretation of, of what the official growth numbers are. Uh, so if China is in fact growing at three, three and a half or four percent, it's a very different picture. And for BC, and we can get some sense that growth in China is on the weaker side because our exports to China are actually down slightly this year and they were down slightly last year. And that's a very, very different picture than, than the past 15 or 20 years where we saw double digits, sometimes 30, sometimes 40 percent growth in the value of exports that we sold to China. So big, big change and it is, it is washing up on BC shores that, that slowdown in China. In migration, population growth is still a positive. It contributes to uh, residential construction and it does support retail spending, part of the factor in retail spending I was talking about a moment. Uh, that's a plus. The slowdown in Alberta is, is a bit of a mix. So oil prices are mixed. Uh, we think that weaker oil prices or lower oil prices translates into lower gas prices at the pump and that does help 
consumers, BC consumers, right across the board. Unfortunately, at the same time, there's a large number of suppliers, perhaps upwards of 800, selling products and services into the oil patch who are located here in BC. Of course, they're going to be hit by the downturn. There's also a large number of people who were commuting from some place in, in British Columbia, the lower mainland, some on the island, uh, into the, the oil patch and even into Calgary to do work. Uh, a lot of those jobs have dried up, people have been laid off, so that's a negative also for BC. So if you add them up, maybe it's a wash. The one thing, because we don't produce a lot of oil in BC, uh, the downturn in oil prices aren't a huge negative for British Columbia like they are in Alberta and, and Saskatchewan and Newfoundland. So we're insulated a little bit because we do get that lift from uh, the savings to consumers without having the huge downward hit uh, that the oil producers have. I'm <laughs> sorry.